I've been in the industry, specifically the pastry uh, kitchen industry, for I think around 14 years now. I started working in the restaurant scene in 2007. My first mentor, I, I, can, I guess I can call him mentor even though he's not in the pastry uh, department, uh, was Sao del Rosario. So most Filipinos know him for being famous for his um, very avant-garde type of approach in food. So I guess I inherited that kind of, I, I can call it style in terms of uh, my approach naman in pastry. I know it's very far from pastry and hot kitchen, medyo magkalayo, but I was able to find a way to merge that kind of like uh, braveness when it comes to mixing flavors. And that's where it all started. And I joined several hotels like the Shangri-La, Resorts for Manila, and Damina. And then after that, I continued on opening several restaurants where I think I met you Matagal na, I think we often see each other some Magnum Cafe. No, that was one of one of my biggest breakthrough to becoming a household name in the Philippines when it comes to pastry. So, but even before that, I was already competing, helping the Philippine pastry scene get some medals from competition yeah. all over. I was able to do that successfully, and I'm really proud of that. One of the, my most memorable moves that I had to do was to partner with a, a restaurant group called Tasteless Food Group. From then on, tuloy tuloy na, we opened so many restaurants together and that was a lot of challenge. I've met so many wonderful people that helped me sustain my creativity and allowed me to be as creative as possible. And then now I'm here in Sydney, Australia because I just want to continue. Me and my husband, JV, we really just wanted to explore a different environment i guess like moving here we thought it was going to be a smooth transition but nah it was i'll tell you more about it in a while but it was a totally different environment but i guess it was necessary for me to learn more and to grow more so in sydney as soon i i moved here 2019 that was june but actually that was delayed na, um uh, by a year i had to uh, tie up some loose strings with the restaurant group. It wasn't an easy transition because siempre, a lot of our restaurants were based on desserts and based on our management skills. Of course, we had to help the, the team that were going to leave in the Philippines before I, I was able to move. And I, I really did my best. And then eventually we moved to Australia. Right away, right off the bat, I think I got here on on a Saturday, my interview now for work na money. I wasn't really actually expecting much. I wasn't expecting I will get a job right away. Not even that, but I, I went to work for Hilton, Sydney. After the interview, the chef told me, you got the job. He was looking for, I guess, like a fresh outlook or a point of view. So maybe that's why he got me to lead the pastry kitchen there. So that was an awesome experience for me. So the first six months, it was amazing. I guess like just like everywhere else in the world, the first few months were really a shock for everyone so all the establishments here in sydney just like everywhere else was put on to stop because of the restrictions that were imposed we all have different perspectives but i can't help but compare it to how the philippines has gone through this experience this unfortunate experience because here i think the local governments were very quick to resolve but prevent further damage so after a few weeks i guess like at most a month na naka lockdown slowly nag open up na rin talaga ka and now i can say that we only have as of today six cases lang siya and it's all controlled nasa hotel quarantine or home quarantine sila and it's being controlled i feel like yung the way the restrictions or the government is handling is as if parang hundreds of thousands yung cases so they're very strict and most people are following them simple lang like you wear a mask on public transportation we never reached the point na may face mask may protective gear it wasn't that the case here so i guess like that's why i was able to do what i'm doing right now and i was able to explore more options i also accepted more projects from around the world like, since na-close yung 
hotel namin for a while. I got a little bit of time in my hands and that was an amazing experience for me as a pastry chef and as a person. Oh, that's kind of tricky because for me, in, if if you go here as a tourist, you'll you'll say na parang wow, uh, there's so much here in Australia. The people here like to eat desserts and pastries. Yes, they do, but it's not that difficult. Like it, it, when you think about it, because when I was uh, about to go here, I need to have an edge. I have to have this. I uh, I had so much ideas. But actually here in Australia, I guess like the difference between the Philippines and here is it's very simple here. So brang simple na wants and needs nila when it comes to pastry. If you're making something good, you'll definitely succeed or you'll definitely sell out. In the Philippines, kasi we're always looking for what's new, what's the best, what's the most perfect pastry and there's so much options uh, and they're all very different from each other very complex yung ano natin yung variety there's nothing wrong with that it's just i think just to point out the difference here if it's a uh, let's say a cliche lamington so there's so many lamington shops but they're all the same uh, i guess there's just one here right now na they found their edge to create more variety of lamington but Apart from that, it's all the same, even like parang small group, like make small changes, but you can't really say na parang, oh, that's so like mind-blowingly great lamington. Everything's okay, like standard-wise, maganda yung mga products everywhere, because I guess it, it they also rely on their amazing ingredients, their amazing produce, their amazing dairy uh, industry. So no matter where you go, the, the products are kind of, neck and neck. Unlike in the Philippines, you want something that's more flavorful or you're looking for a better quality dessert or a version of the dessert that you want, you have to pay a premium price tag for that. But here, it's just okay, siya pantay-pantay. Pros and cons, I guess, here, you can't really um, eh, yung hindi ka makalabas from that standard, it's really hard to uh, stand out because people are expecting like a certain quality standard. In the Philippines, once you use a better brand of butter, stand out ka na kaagad. Ganun, ganun siya. And here, you, you don't have to really stand out so much for people to appreciate what you have. I guess like I can say this now because I have a better understanding of how things work here. I'm speaking for in my career alone, you don't really have to stand out here. So in the Philippines, we were trained to stand out. Our parents, our families are expecting us to do really well in what we do. Parang Asian, di ba ganyan, mga stereotypical na Asian, we're very competitive. Here in Australia, di ba may saying na Australians are very relaxed and very chilled and laid back? And it really depends on how you look at it. Uh, but in my career and as a chef, you don't really need to stand out that much. You just have to be good. Like you just have to do good. Uh, and that's enough for you to not necessarily recognize, but more of to get a good job. Yeah, you don't need to do m so much. But with, for me, I, I'm not saying that that's what I'm doing right now because you guys I probably know me already. I can't really change that quality of mine. I can't really sit down and relax. <laughs> so I am trying my best to keep myself uh, that way. That's amazing. I'm going to stay the same. Miko, that you met years back, I'm still striving to uh, stay the same. So I guess, I don't know, I, I'm not the best person to say something about this, but I guess like, I'm going to base it on my experience as executive pastry chef in hotels and res fine dining restaurants here. I was like the management position already, but I wasn't in any way part of the human resource. With that said, before the pandemic happened, the whole of Australia was actually very accepting of migrants. One of the best ways to get here is through work. I have friends and family that lives here that I know that they entered here through work. So by being hired by a company. So I think if the pandemic did not happen, it, that will still continue. I guess it, I still have friends in the Philippines and other countries who are applying for jobs here. Yun lang talaga na, na delay because of the 
a closure ng borders. But other than that, I think you can still apply for jobs, whether it's regional or in, in the main cities. There's several visa types. Again, I'm not the expert, so I don't know the codes. I, I entered here in a very different manner as a skilled worker. That was my visa. Skilled worker kasi you're not dependent on the job uh, that you will get. It's more of like your skills got you through. They like qualified as yung skill here is parang sabi nila, it's parang a standard nila. So, but the other options are available, I guess. So, to work as in a region where it's not in, a, in a, exactly a city is a possibility and also uh, in the city. Pero, it really depends on how difficult it is to get the papers running. But, definitely naga accept siya hindi siya close at all and i'm sure there are just delays because of covid and also the closure of the borders like i think that's the only challenge that people who are thinking of getting a job or migrating here they will definitely face that it has always been my goal to open restaurants here in Sydney. So restaurants may es talaga. But it's always been my goal and my dream to open the, the brands that I have in the Philippines if I had my way. And yeah, like start na the process started two and a half months ago when I, I was talking to my friends. Because we've been talking about opening something for a long while now, parang 2013 pa. And sabi ko, I'm, I don't think I'm ready yet. I wanted to experience working here first. I want to gain more uh, confidence. And then sabi nila, two and a half months ago, ready na. Sabi nila, you've always been ready. And then I said, really? Okay, sige. Let's do something. Let's start it. Let's talk about it. So we did. And then to, uh, these are Pinoy friends. So mabilis din from back. And then they told me, yeah, we're all very plugged in and switch on. And we opened last Friday Donut Concept. So it's very similar to our concept in the Philippines called Poison. So same idea of promoting uh, a better version of a donut and more quirky and different flavors, but it's still very simple. But this one has a more, I guess like it has more of me from the branding to how it speaks to its customers. It's very me and very like, inside my head. So um, it's very strong when it comes to like the brand aspect of it. And of course, the flavors are going to be very creative but based on a classic it's called don't donuts so yeah one day i thought I, I needed to think of a name that's really different and also very catchy so yeah so i said i don't i found don't donuts and i pitched it to my partners and they said oh my yeah that's a name that is definitely catchy so we registered it although it was two and a half months long it's not that long especially here in australia and also if you consider pa the pandemic like what's happening yeah it was definitely quick but it was a lot of hard work yeah it, i guess like it's the same but in as what i've mentioned earlier it's pretty basic here so basic it's fine because their basic is quite good because they, they use amazing ingredients but Again, there's nothing much that really stands out. And that's why I thought of donuts. There's so much room for this type of donut. So yeah, very handcrafted and artisanal. So yeah, it's kind of the same. Because in the Philippines, if you look at Instagram and Facebook, there's so much, so many different varieties, so many different approach and flavors and different tiers from the cheapest one to the expensive ones we in the philippines we have everything i guess when i was thinking of don't donuts i was thinking as a filipino and at the same time as an australian because i need to stand out enough stand out because every time i think of my next move i think about what would the pinoy say what would my dessertarian say but at the same time i need to cater to the Australians, which are very, again, laid back and they're very simple-minded. They really like, if it's good, it's good. So, sa atin kasi parang, let's check again. Let's have like, 
more decoration and let's look at the story behind that again nothing wrong with that it's just two, two totally different way of thinking way of bringing again i'm still filipino they call it philo here so i'm still philo i guess like i have to divide my brain like my pinoy side and the australian side already and merge that i guess like every time i'm able to find that balance it's quite special so i end up with something really special Okay, just to tell you, because you know me and Charles and Christine, my business partners in the Philippines. So, you know us, na parang, parang ano na kami, we have a certain set of, not framework, I wouldn't say framework, but when we open a restaurant, okay, Miko, may space tayo, this space, and then, ano yung nasa brain mo, let's pick it, and then Christine will do the fine operation side. So, parang ganun. So, sabi ko, I guess I wanted to channel that way of thinking here. Oh my gosh. Because in the Philippines, we have a big team already because that's understandable. I think Tasteless ha now has like 34, 40 restaurants. I'm not sure anymore. But yeah, so we have a big team here. The main difference is it's just me and my two business partners. Michelin, shout out. So, but kami lang. All aspects of opening the business, like from getting uh, looking for the space because it's not like dito parang punta ka sa mall nandun na yung lahat ng space or you talk to a, an agent of SM or Glorieta and then they will give you like ito yung options nyo ganyan or si Charles lalapit na everything here puntahan mo talaga tatawagan mo yung agent tapos uh, they there's a possibility they won't come back to you so so ganun talaga parang hunting the space kasi yung concept i already have that down in my head that was the first thing which benefited our company uh, to a certain extent I, I knew personally what the donut shop has to look like which neighborhood we should open it in so which uh, clientele or demographic we're targeting so here individual people don't necessarily yung term na dumadayo like us kasi we always brave that traffic in it so just to get to that a uh, dinner they were parang just to try that I, especially i guess like you you experience that every single time when there's an restaurant opening uh, parang oh my gosh bahat ang layo so parang gana. but here people not necessarily do that like if they do parang sobrang special parang if they go for a, if they call it a destination restaurant that alone it means like a uh, medyo sasadyain mo talaga so every person uh, every uh, suburb has their own market different attitude of people different wants and needs so we had to look for the perfect spot for that because it's their first branch of course we're looking at expanding the brand but the first one has to be the perfect example so yeah and dami talaga down to the council yung council here parang barangay permits everything you have it kami talaga yung nag-asikaso so we had to deal and face that maybe you'll think na oh maybe because it's your first one yes maybe you're right but i don't think there's another if you ask someone to do that for you it's gonna be really expensive so it's not like in the philippines uh, you you have people to help you do that here it's uh, a lot of like, leg work talaga so I only started my role, like the proper role na baking, two days before we opened, which was like Wednesday. I was so excited to do it because I've been dealing with electricians, with fitters, uh, plumbers. But until two days before the opening, dun pala, that was the time that I said, like, I really need to stop. I really need to make the donuts already. I guess the one of my favorites is where we ate last night lang. Because the restaurants here in Australia are very focused on ingredients, very focused of driven on the ingredients that they get. It's unlike where we've eaten in the past in Europe and in, in Spain, it's more concept driven. So it really depends on how... I can't really say that's my favorite, that's amazing. It has different expectations at that moment, different approaches yung restaurant when it comes to delivering good food. So, but the one that stood out to me was the one where we ate yesterday. It's a modern, fast, casual, but fine dining style service. Yeah, that's a very big trend here. 
in Sydney. Um, it's called Chako. It's a Japanese restaurant, more uh, yakitori type, but I think the star of the uh, the dinner was their appetizer mousse. I don't know what the term for charcuterie in in Japanese, but it's their charcuterie because it was a uh, carpaccio of uh, wagyu beef, and then on top there's uh, uni. So it's sashimi carpaccio na wagyu, ganon siya. And then on top there was um, uni, and then parmigiano, and then there was a uh 90 degree egg yolk and then what else was in there? and black truffles so it was conceptually going to be amazing but it was the way it was presented and the way it tasted was simple and it really stands out because of the freshness of it and also the richness of it so i haven't had that type of meal here in sydney because i eat a lot i eat in so many restaurants we both have really high standards when it comes to good food so eaten in the craziest concept wise restaurants and also the most simple but properly prepared restaurants. so i know what i'm talking about you know what you're talking about so so yeah when it comes to good restaurants here in sydney you have to kind of set your expectations if you're expecting mind-blowing concept there are some restaurants but it's not always the case thank you for asking that because that's something that as much as i can i would like to communicate with filipinos i think what we were doing is enough what we're doing is i know we're always thinking what's next what's better filipinos are really hard working and we're very um, switched on we have dreams and i think that's enough we don't really need to drive ourselves crazy because our hard work alone it's what sets us apart if there's something that we really need to embrace and we've already done that the past i guess five six years is to fall in love with our culture and our food again so we just have to continue doing that and never be ashamed of what our food is because food now is very diverse and as long as we're doing our food justice we just have to continue doing that and there's nothing wrong with that and we just have to find a balance between perfecting things and also enjoying what we do so yeah like just to find the joy and the, the craft that's that's my best advice for filipinos because for me uh moving here the best thing that I've learned is to appreciate hard work a little bit more. Because in the Philippines, I was just like, work, 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 ganyan. And also, I drive my, my staff crazy. When I was at work, there was uh, nothing else but work. Like, that was the mindset. So here, I learned how to appreciate the hard works of the Pinoy. So you can follow me on my Instagram page. It's Chef Miko. Aspiras. If you want to see more pictures of my dog and my husband, you can check out our Facebook page. I'm also on TikTok, Chef Miko Aspiras. I always update my Instagram, my latest uh, things that I do, where I go. You can watch my stories. And yeah, more things like this, more, more opportunities to talk to the audience. If you're in Kuwait, so this is, I think, the one more thing. Uh, do we still have time? So during the pandemic, one thing that I did, I I forgot to mention to you during that time that I had a little bit of time to do a lot of uh, like internet stuff like endorsements online besides the endorsements uh, that I was able to capture besides those the most unexpected thing happened there was a company in uh, the Middle East in Kuwait specifically that asked me if I can help them with their restaurant and their cafe and then I said is this going to be a dessert cafe because I'm a dessert chef and they said yeah uh, it's up to you we know what you do we know exactly your style so I said who is this like who, who it possibly could give me their trust their resources at this uh, t time like during the pandemic now so it's very risky to ask somebody who's from the other side of the world to help you create desserts for you and then i, I ended up creating 56 desserts for them I i'm not really sure if they've used all of it already or they're just still pacing it but i have taught them through online videos and it's not like food shows then lalabas mo bake na no it was like live and then you record it every single step because the team that was help executing my desserts in in kuwait i haven't met them so it has to be like step by step imagine 56 recipes and my desserts you know my desserts are quite um 
very tricky and stylized. So yeah, they were able to achieve all of it. So I think it was February when they opened. The name is Select Kuwait. They're on Instagram as well. The desserts are stunning. So the place is stunning. And I'm not exactly sure how they're handling the situation there, but it looks like people are going out. I think they have 10,000 followers on Instagram already since they opened. So it's such an amazing thing to be part of. I'm really proud of that as well. So that's S-E-L-E-C-T, Select Kuwait. So yeah, it's kind of amazing. So yeah, yeah, that's them. I didn't do the burgers and the, the savory stuff, but the desserts lang, so, and a few of the drinks. It was an amazing thing to do because how can you teach people from the other side of the world your desserts it's so difficult and online lang kayo nag-uusap you don't know the the ingredients that they get i'm sure they have amazing ingredients we're able to pull it off funny <laughs> pero parang sabi ko anything is possible you just have to grab it i guess because i could have easily said uh, i can't because hirap siya. mahirap talaga siya because your brain has to be wired a different way because I'm so used to enforcing my own style and quality. But now I've, I've learned to, because of this, we worked on it for three months lang. So imagine JV, my husband was taking care of the camera. Lahat ng ingredients we have to buy. At talaga ako lang, punta sa, sa store. And then, oven ko lang sa bahay yung ginagamit ko. It was so, it was fun, but... Wow, grabe yung hard work talaga. They contacted me sa Sydney na. The owners sent me photos of my desserts, I think, from when I was in college. It's so weird. So He really did his research and he really liked my desserts. But he contacted me when I was here na. During ano na, pandemic, because uh, I was able to go back to Manila pa 20... 2020, last year, no March, I did an event in at the Grid in Rockwell. So that was my my parang homecoming event. And then they contacted me May, so March, April, May. So yeah, and then we finished the project June, July, August, September. Sep- around September we finished. So yeah, yeah, that that was a very different, very different experience, but. If you think that you don't have any more choice or you don't have any more opportunity, look at that. So the like, sobrang other side of the world. I think they contacted me on LinkedIn. So parang hello, ganyan lang. So it's very casually. And then and on Instagram then they contacted me. So yeah. The world works and so most yeah. unexpected yeah. now. I'm just really happy that I was able to do this with you, Anton, because I, I, I guess like you're one of the people that saw my career from when I was starting to where I am now. So yeah, I, I'm just grateful that I'm able to do this and I hope this won't be the last. And yeah, I hope I was able to inspire someone so, so today. So yeah.